Hello and welcome to my guide on biological molecules for A level. There's quite a lot of information coming up so you may want to watch this one once or twice in order to get all of it. First of all here's an overview of all the biological molecules. So the main ones that you'll need to know about are proteins, carbohydrates and nucleic acids. All of these three are what's called polymers. So they're made up from lots of repeating units called monomers joined together. The fourth one that you need to know about is lipids. I've just got on this slide a few uses and examples of some of these compounds so you could get an overview of why they're important in living organisms. OK, first of all, we'll have a bit more of an in-depth look at carbohydrates. Uh, the diagram we've got there is a monosaccharide of glucose, so that's a single carbohydrate molecule, one of the monomers, which can join up to make polymers. Carbohydrates get their name because they contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. What you generally find is there's a 2 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, like there is in water. So, for instance, glucose is C6H12O6, so you've got 2 to 1 of the hydrogen to the oxygen atoms. Larger carbohydrates are made up from polymers of simple sugars. So, as well as glucose, you've got fructose and galactose. These single subunits are called monomers, and monosaccharides are specifically the carbohydrate monomers. There's three disaccharides that you need to know about for your course. There's maltose, which is two glucose monosaccharides attached together. Sucrose, which is a glucose plus a fructose. And lactose, which is glucose plus galactose. In all of these disaccharides, and in larger carbohydrate molecules, the monosaccharides are joined together via glycosidic bonds. So how do we make a glycosidic bond? The two monosaccharides shown are glucose and glucose, so we're going to form a molecule of maltose. I'm now going to highlight the atoms which are involved in forming a glycosidic bond. As you can see from the product formed, we've got two OH groups. One of them loses a the hydrogen atom, the other loses the O and the H. In doing that, they form a linkage through the oxygen atom. Now, we haven't got all of the atoms which we started with there, so we need a water molecule as well. Reactions such as this, which join things together releasing water, are called a condensation reaction. Now, moving on to proteins. The chemical elements within a protein are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sometimes sulphur. This can be memorised by using the word chons. All proteins are made up from a range of 20 amino acids. This is the same in all living organisms, no matter what it is. There are a small number of essential amino acids which vary from species to species, but an essential amino acid is one which must be present regularly in a diet because it can't be synthesised from other amino acids in the body. Proteins are produced by ribosomes in the process of translation, which will be covered in a later lesson. To make a protein, you need to link together amino acids, and to do this you make peptide bonds. We've got two amino acids on the screen at the moment. The important groups for forming a peptide bond are going to be the NH2 amino group and the C double bond OH carboxyl group. Now to highlight again the atoms involved in forming the linkage, we've got the OH group of the carboxyl group and we've got the hydrogen atom attached to the amino group. To form a dipeptide, that is two amino acids linked together, you're going to again lose a water molecule, so this is another example of a condensation reaction, and you form a linkage directly between the carbon atom and the nitrogen atom. Now finally on proteins, there's different levels of structure that you need to be able to describe. 
you have primary structure. This is just simply the amino acid sequence when the protein is made by the ribosomes. So you have your 20 amino acids, but you can assemble them in lots of different orders. The secondary structure is moving up a level to whether you have alpha helices, which look like little coils, or beta sheets, which look a little bit like um, a pack of cotton wool. These levels of structure are held together by hydrogen bonds. You also have tertiary structure. This is a 3D shape of protein molecules. The shape is held together and maintained by hydrogen bonds, ionic interactions, hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions, and disulfide bridges between cysteine amino acid residues. You also have quaternary structure in proteins. Not all proteins have this, but it's where you've either got multiple polypeptide chains or you've got non-protein components. So a good example of quaternary structure is the haemoglobin molecule. It has four different polypeptides, so it's got quaternary structure for that reason. And it also contains an iron ion in its centre, so it also has a non-protein component, again giving it quaternary structure. Nucleic acids are one more example of a polymer. They're composed of the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and phosphorus. To make a nucleic acid, you need to attach together a string of nucleotides with phosphodiester bonds. A nucleotide is a nitrogenous base linked to a pentose sugar and a phosphate group. In RNA, the pentose sugar is ribose, in DNA it's deoxyribose. There's just a subtle difference between those two molecules. To link, to link together nucleotides, you need to form phosphodiester bonds. To do this, the following atoms are involved. You've got the OH group on a sugar residue, and you've got the OH group on a phosphate group. Again, this is going to be an example of a condensation reaction. So you're going to have water given off, and when that water's lost, you form a linkage through the oxygen atom. When you talk about the structure of DNA, you'll have heard the term a sugar phosphate backbone. The reason it's referred to as this is because those are the groups which are involved in forming the phosphodiester bonds. This leaves the nitrogenous bases free to pair with other bases in the molecule. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, is a special example of a nucleotide. It's composed of adenosine, which is adenine, the nitrogenous base, plus a pentose sugar, and it's got three phosphate groups attached to it. ATP is the energy currency for living organisms. For this role, you can cleave phosphate groups in hydrolysis reactions, and that releases energy to allow other chemical reactions to take place. Finally, lipids are the last biological molecule we're going to go through. As I said earlier, these aren't actually an example of a polymer because there's no single repeating units. You've got glycerol and fatty acids which have different structures. Lipids contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And to join the fatty acids to the glycerol, you have ester linkages. To form an ester linkage, there needs to be a reaction between the alcohol group on the glycerol and the carboxylic acid group on each of the fatty acids, which are going to bind to it. Again, in this reaction, it's going to be a condensation reaction, so the OH and the H will make a water molecule at the same time as there being a linkage formed through the oxygen to join the glycerol to the fatty acid. Thank you for listening and feel free to watch the video through as many times as you need to to get all the information.